This is the Hoyt Alpha Elite bow, got the fuel cams fitted. First time I've had a chance to play with these bows is today, so I'm really excited to have a go with them and, and let you know what I think. I'm going to do my best to describe how it feels to shoot, do some close-up of the quality of the finish and the build of it. Uh, it's a top-of-the-range bow, quite an expensive bow, so I'm going to be pretty critical on it, and hopefully it'll give you a good idea of what to expect should you decide to have one. Well, here they are, just taking them out of the boxes. We've got two bows here, we've got a orange crush and a, what's this one called, straight blue on that one. And inside the boxes, uh, they come in a pretty tough cardboard box. Get the usual Hoyt team cap and an owner's manual and a, a key ring in there as well. And with all the Hoyt bows, they always come really well packaged. Nice uh, bubble wrap here, let's get this first one out. First one, that's Orange Crush. That looks pretty nice. Yeah, one blue, one orange. Quite striking colours. Uh, the blue is really nice, dark blue. Going to do some close-ups of those colours in the finish, but uh, really nice. Like that, nice dark blue, not wishy-washy at all. Really good, strong colour. Uh, sold a few in this colour, not the Alpha Elites yet. But that's a colour uh, that was on many of the previous models. Must be popular. That's quite a very vibrant orange, that. Not for everybody, but pretty striking. That has a closer look at the finish on the anodizing. These are the target versions, which you're paying a bit extra for against the camo or the blackout. But you can see why. I mean, the, the polished anodized finish is coming out really well, and it's a really vibrant orange. So quite an impressive looking finish, it does give you the feeling of quality the moment you, you pick the bow up and it's a really smooth even finish all over, there's no blemishes to be seen and there is a there is only a very slight issue on the finish which can't anything be done about anyway, it's at the inside of these cutouts I'll show you on the blue one, it shows up more on the blue one. You can't get the, the polishing mop before anodizing inside these cutouts. So inside here, you can see some screech marks from the cutters. But come on, I'm being a pretty critical person there because they're so good. I'm finding it hard to find a, a fault on the finish at all on those risers. I'll just about see a little bit of screeching inside the, ho the holes, but the surface finishes are really nice. They do a range of colours, quite a few different colours. I've only been able to get these two. So I'm quite lucky to get these two because they've only just been launched. I'm looking forward to seeing the others as well. Got silver hardware on there. The limb finish is absolutely beautiful. Really good gloss finish on that. See that showing through there. I'll show you the laminates on the side, which is always a, a really nice feature about the Hoyt limbs, as you can see the different colour laminates coming through there. Very fine grey-ish white outer laminate on there, just underneath the outer fiberglass skin. The finish on the limbs Really, really good. I'll show you the bottom then. I like the limb graphics as well. You really can't fault the limb finish at all. It's top notch. Extremely good. We've got silver anodized cams. These are the new fuel cams. I've not shot these yet, but no idea what they're going to feel like. Uh, we'll discuss those in a bit of detail later. So you're paying top money for this bow. I mean, this is pushing a thousand pounds. Probably going to be over a thousand pounds in the new year when they come out. So you are expecting great things from this bow. Well, I certainly am, anyway. The first impressions when you take them out of the box, you can tell. Certainly, cosmetically, it's a quality product. 
as the top cam there. The black anodizing on the module section. The same on the bottom module section as well. A very small module on the bottom. We'll see how that adjusts later. Strings and cables. That stripy grey and white finish on them. Comes standard with a string stopper. It's a slightly different chain. It's got a, a square back on them this time. The few string suppressors used to have a bit of a dish in the middle of it. And that's connected to a carbon rod which fits straight into the riser as it are for a leak badge. And on the other side of the stopper there it's got two grub screws for holding it in. And what else do we have? A stainless steel stabiliser bush in there. As we'd expect it would be a disaster if any bow came out at this price level and didn't even put stainless steel inserts in. And you'd be surprised because some of them do. Cable guard, carbon cable guard rod, plastic slider. You, you would expect on a bow of this price to have a, a Teflon slider at least. But a bulk standard plastic slider on a carbon rod it does run quite smooth, but still. First thing I'd whip off would be that and put a good quality Teflon slider on there. There we go. Uh, we've got the uh, shocks, alpha shocks, I think they're called, these rubber dampers in the limbs. Uh, the limb pocket, so you pivot in limb pockets, got an, it's an extended limb pocket, it's quite wide in the in the length of that and that is a that's a trend more and more now on, on limbs is to lengthen the uh, the anchoring point of the limb so it keeps the limb squarer, it's easier to keep the limb square over a, a long distance. Um, some of the uh, the older bows would have a limb pocket probably uh, three quarters or two thirds of that length so that they're extending the limb pockets but, uh, good secure strong mount in there really nice looking bow great stuff let's have a closer look at the grip so the grips a really critical aspect of the bow and if, if you've ever seen any of the other reviews I do I always rave about narrow grips it's really important to have narrow grips to allow you to have precise hand position and reduce the torque on the bow and this is a narrow grip and it is a very comfortable grip hardly anything of it there again if you were to hold it as a normal full grip it'd be extremely uncomfortable but you don't you just you just feel in the, the back flat section of the grip here to allow you to precisely place your hand and in that position there it's really comfortable and it's like how the the front here is shaped up to fit as your hand slides up to the top there and you have your, your grip on your hand in the correct angle it matches the shape of the throat of the grip really well uh, I have to be careful on this see even in that position here how close the tech bar comes to my wrist it's really very close to that and if you've got chunky wrists you could well be leaning on that but with correct hand position with your hand turned out you should get clearance on that okay Notice the grip, it's, it's thinner at the back, so the, this area here on the width is narrower and it widens out towards the front, so the front section is, is wider than the rear section. But this is a, the ideal type of grip, a narrow, comfortable, precision grip. Uh, really nice grip, I like that very much. The other quite distinguishing feature is the shoot-through riser. Um, they never had that on all of the bows before and the Alpha Elite is one of the a new style of bow. It's a, a long riser with quite short, I wouldn't say parallel limbs, parallel limbs at full draw but um, certainly a shorter, more parallel limbs than any of the other Hoy bows with this shoot through style riser. So it'll be interesting to see how that's taken up this year. It's got quite a slim, elegant little side to it. It's not a full width shoot through a riser. It's quite, it's definitely much smaller and thinner and quite artistically done. Just been handling these bows a bit and I've detected a bit of a rattle. If you uh, listen, I don't know if you can hear that. And I'm trying to find out what it was. Definitely hear a, a noise. It, uh, it's coming from these limb pockets. These are loose. Can you listen to that. 
this little plastic spacer inside here is, um, is loose. It's making quite a noise. And then, so I've just checked the other bow. This one rattles as well. It's, it's, And you hear that rattling. Is it on the top as well? The top ones, the top ones are tight, so we've got a loose, loose spacer on the bottom of this one, and a loose spacer on the top of this one. Well, I wouldn't be best pleased with that actually if I'd have just had delivery of one of these. It can be fixed, but I'm trying to figure out how you could fix that. The only way to stop that is you'd have to disassemble the bow, take the limb pocket off, and somehow pack out, probably with some tape, this uh, plastic thing in the middle. To and oh, so that's a bit. You could forgive it maybe on some lower cost bows to have the odd little rattle, but that's not really acceptable to have a rattle like that, especially when you have to disassemble it to fix it. Spotted another design change which seems to be new but may be mistaken. But certainly on the other Elite Series bows, they used to have a floating yoke uh, type arrangement where this is a served in yoke. And looking at closely, more closely at that, you can see that one side is twisted up quite a lot on the right hand side, and the left hand side has got nothing in it at all. So I'm going to have a look at that shortly and see why that is. And it's nice to have two bows as well because sometimes you wonder is it just the one bow. Um, but no, they've definitely made a conscious effort to twist the right hand side up more than the left hand side. And I think I know why that is, but I'll explain that uh, in a few minutes. Just having a closer look at this new fuse cam. And it looks extremely familiar, so I and you've got an older Alpha Max model which has got the XTR cam and it looks to the eye exactly the same. Let's look at the profile of that. Here's the profile of that. Just flick these bows over. And the Alpha Max as well. Well, to the naked eye, those profiles are exactly the same. They've got some different weight relief in there, and the little cable stop post is a bit chunkier. But really, just a look at them, they look exactly the same. So I'm going to do a few more tests on that, and I hope it's not just a, a new label stuck on an existing cam, because that's a bit cheeky really. Let's see how it draws.